Hello, thank you for joining us. We begin our report at the southern border, specifically in Texas, where state authorities may now arrest and prosecute migrants suspected of crossing illegally. Supreme Court Tuesday allowed a Texas law known as SB4 to go into effect while a lower court continues to weigh a lawsuit brought by the Biden administration claiming the law is unconstitutional. The federal government has traditionally had the sole power over immigration, and CBS News senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe is following the president's response. Razor wire and Texas National Guard troops along the U.S.-Mexico border reinforced tonight by the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, Lone Star State Sheriff and Police Departments can arrest, jail, and judges can prosecute migrants accused of illegally entering the U.S. He's not denying illegal entry. President Biden is aiding and abetting illegal entry. Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who's been locked in a years-long fight with the federal government over border security, last year signed what's known as the Texas. SB4 law amid it's the historic banned. increase in migrant border crossings. Today, he called the Supreme Court's ruling a positive development. The White House sought to block the law and today said it's another example of Republican officials politicizing the border while blocking real solutions. They called on Congress to pass a bipartisan border security plan currently being blocked in the House. The Supreme Court allowed the new law to take effect, but it still faces a challenge in a lower federal court. Today, conservative justices Brett Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett urged the appeals court to rule quickly. Liberal justices Sonia Sotomayor and Katanji Brown Jackson questioned the law's constitutionality and said it will upend the long-standing federal state balance of power and sow chaos. Multiple law enforcement officials tell CBS News they're already short-staffed and don't have the training from the state on how to enforce the law. It's not like, oh, he looks illegal and we're going to put him in jail. We can't do that. You know, we can't uh, stereotype someone, you know, someone from Mexico and, and do that. And that potential for racial profiling across Texas is what concerns migrant activists like Dylan Corbett. It's not just against recently arriving migrants, migrants who are coming to the border today, but this, this really goes after Texans throughout the state. Ed O'Keefe joins me now from Las Vegas. Ed, Mexico says the law in Texas is both anti-immigrant and says they won't accept migrants. Uh, that Texas officials try to deport. So does this now put a diplomatic problem in the President Biden's lap? It would, and, and there already really was, John, for the last year, Biden administration officials have been shuttling back and forth to Mexico City to try to convince Mexican officials to help them stop migrants from getting to the Texas or the Arizona borders. In this case now, they'll likely have a few more phone calls about this. And remember, this has been a big political issue on this side of the border. Mexico itself is having a presidential election in June, so undoubtedly it's going to fuel their politics as well. Speaking of the election, uh, presidential campaign, the president uh, is in Vegas giving, uh, talking about his economic policies. Uh, what, what, what's his pitch? Yeah, he, he made a stop first in Reno this morning to open a campaign office, then came here to Las Vegas to talk about housing specifically. He's got billions of dollars of budget requests to try to ease the housing crunch and help Americans across the country try to find a home if they can't already or at least be able to afford one. They came here to Nevada to talk about this because it's a, an acute part of the problem and the strain on the economy in this state where things are lagging behind the rest of the country because of its dependency on the service industry and the fact that real estate around here is just so expensive. So today, focusing on that issue, promising to be back, but in this state at least, he trails former President Trump on questions of who better to trust on the economy. From here, he heads to Arizona and then Texas to raise money later in the week. Tell me in Arizona, um, on Tuesday evening, he's supposed to focus, or make a pitch anyway, focused on the Latino voters. Um, so if he's talking about housing in Vegas, what's he going to talk about in Arizona? Well, he's going to talk about the economy. He's going to talk about, uh, you know, protecting reproductive rights, the fact that he's helped bring down health care costs, concerns about the future of democracy. But his campaign's going to talk about it in Spanglish. John, Spanish and English. They unveiled a series of ads today that demonstrate the more nuanced way they're trying to reach Latino voters across the country, directly in Spanish on Spanish language television networks and digital you know, websites, social media channels. 
in English on some channels in states that have large Hispanic populations, and then Spanglish, this combination of Spanish and English. There's an ad they released talking about how they brought down the cost of insulin to $35, or $35. You can hear the announcer go back and forth in both languages. The idea being, they know that there are multi-generational households where the grandmother, the parents, and the kids now can cast votes. They got to try to get all of them to turn out in November, and this is one subtle way they hope they can do it. Ed O'Keefe, traveling with the president. Thank you so much, Ed.